All right, we are continuing to monitor the latest on Hurricane Idalia this morning. We are looking live in Clearwater Beach, Florida. They are a little bit away from the center, but they are still seeing the wind and rain as we speak. Mandatory evacuations in effect there because of storm surge and storm surge is going to be pretty bad, especially the further north you get into the Big Bend region. Let's take a look at what's going on right now. You can see the northern extent of Idalia now moving into central Georgia from Swainsboro through Dublin, Cochrane, Unadilla towards Americas. This is the northern extent of the rainfall that is going to continue sliding to the north as we work our way later into the morning hours. The heavier stuff you see back down here near Tifton and Valdosta is going to continue sliding towards the north as the storm comes ashore as a category four hurricane. A tornado watch now in effect from the Orlando area all the way up to Toombs County in Vidalia. That is as far west as it is going to come because we don't have a tornado threat on our side of the storm. So we're going to continue monitoring it all. You see the center there. It looks like it's trying to go through what's called an eyewall replacement cycle as it's coming ashore, so it does look like it might be just a little bit stronger as it makes landfall here in the next hour or so, probably about 20 miles away from making landfall. Horseshoe Bend down here, Cedar Key down to the south, and so this is going to be making landfall almost as far north as you can go in the Gulf of Mexico. Category 4, this is the 6 a.m. information. Wind still of 130 miles an hour. Pressure down to 942. That is 30 millibars lower than just 5 p.m. yesterday. It did successfully go through the rapid intensification process, moving towards the north-north Northeast at 17. It will still be a hurricane as it comes through coastal Georgia. So a category two just on the east side of Aldosta and then maintaining that hurricane status passing just to the north of Savannah before being a 70 mile an hour tropical storm early tomorrow morning near the Charleston area. So if you got a major hurricane making landfall and coming by Macon as a cat two, we are still going to see plenty of wind and rain in our neck of the woods. Hurricane warnings in effect for Tampa up to Tallahassee. It does include Valdosta over towards the Savannah area now and into coastal South Carolina. We do have a tropical storm warning in effect for Hancock County down through Macon, Roberta, Butler points south and east. This is for winds today anywhere from 40 to 70 miles an hour. But do notice the hurricane warning comes as close as the Okmulgee River just on the other side side of Lumber, Lumber City. That's where you get into that hurricane warning area. So through the morning hours, we're going to see the wind and rain expand across central Georgia. The heaviest of the rain is going to be from Washington County down through Crisp County and points south and east. There is the center moving toward Waycross and then passing uh, uh, just to the southeast of us through the afternoon hours. The wind and rain will begin to move out by later on tonight. But what's going to happen first is the rain's going to move out. We're still going to have wind on the backside of here that's going to be sticking around through the early evening hours, and then it will all begin to clear out through the overnight hours. So the timeline 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. today is when we are going to be watching very closely here in central Georgia for the latest on that. And we just got an update to the wind forecast. Let's go to meteorologist Alex Pry for more on that. Yeah, Alex, the shift in wind has been general up to the northwest. So think about it like this. All of these darker colors were a little bit to the southeast. They are now encompassing our southeastern counties right there. So let's take it color by color. 20 to 30 mile an hour wind still up to our northwest. We're talking for Scythe, Monroe County, Monticello up in Jasper County. Then you get down to the Macon area, Gray and Jones County, 30 to 40 mile an hour winds. And now we have Houston County, Warner Robins, Jeffersonville, Twiggs County, all the way up to Irwinton and Wilkinson County. Those are going to be 40 to 50 mile an hour winds and that's stretching as far southward as Cordill down in Chris County and then all of these areas Lawrence County Dublin Eastman and Dodge County Telfair uh, County with McRae and Vidalia over in Toombs County 50 to 60 mile an hour winds so they are expecting this to go further inland and encompass more of our southeastern counties. Yeah, all right. Thank you, Alex. So today, a day to stay home. As we're going to be looking at strong winds across central Georgia. 77, the high temperature. We will be tracking the hurricane all day long. The good news is, after any hurricane, we do have nice weather that prevails. So 80s as we get into Labor Day weekend, 89 for Labor Day itself. But we've got a lot to get through today before we can look ahead to Labor Day.